According to my latest quiz, about half of you don't really know what the reversed inbuilt method actually does. So in this lesson, I'm going to be showing you how to use it and what it actually returns and why it returns what it returns. So to get started, I have this code, which I wrote ahead of time. And essentially it's a function that displays the information of a variable. And by information, it just shows us how many bytes that variable is. So we can see the memory usage. Then we have two iterables. One is a text of type string, which just contains Python language. And the other one are some coordinates for battleship. So we have A1, B2, and so on, which is a list of type string. So let's look at first how we can reverse this. And we're going to start with the sugar syntax that a lot of us use because it is probably the easiest way to reverse text or lists. And that is using the text at the index of colon colon minus one. So we're using slicing notation and we're taking a step backwards for each element. And if we try to display the info for this, you'll see that we're going to get the reverse of the Python language. We're going to get whatever this says. I can't pronounce that, but that's what we're going to get back. And we can do the same thing for the coordinates. So with this sugar syntax, we can just run that and we're going to get the reverse of our list. So what was the point of doing that when you can just type in text.reverse? Well, first of all, that doesn't exist in Python. And that's one of the most common comments I get in my shorts is just use dot reverse. That doesn't exist in Python. But what about reversed? Well, that doesn't work either. You can't just type in dot reversed. That's not going to do anything other than give us a attribute error because that doesn't exist. But then you might be thinking, okay, if you're using it wrong, of course it doesn't work. So try doing it like this instead. And then we will print that. Why don't I just do this? Well, that's going to give us a reversed object back. So let's talk about what this reversed object actually is. And to do that, I'm going to first create two new variables. One is called reversed text, and that's going to equal reversed with the text inside, and then reversed coordinates, which is going to equal the reversed coordinates. So now theoretically we have two reversed objects. Now let's display the information regarding these objects. So display info for reverse text and display info for reversed coordinates. When we run this, we're going to get two objects back and they're going to both be of 48 bytes because what we're returning is an iterator which can act as a generator. So it's extremely memory efficient because we haven't loaded all of the elements into memory. We've just created an object that contains the information regarding those elements. So they have been reversed, but now they're stored in an iterator, which means if we actually want to get them out of there, we're going to have to call or use some methods that extract those. So for example, if we want to get the string reversed or take the string out of that object, we're going to have to use an empty space with the join method, and then we can pass in that iterator. So here we can pass in the reversed text and that will work just fine. We can run the program and it's going to reverse the text. And what you will notice is that once we take everything out of that object, it's going to take the same amount of memory as it did earlier. So we're saving on memory by not using everything at once. And the same thing is going to go for our list, our list of coordinates. If we go here and we just say, okay, we're going to convert our iterator to a list, you'll see that this will take 104 bytes as soon as we convert it completely to a list. So creating an object will save on memory. And these are some very small variables. I mean, as you can see, 104 bytes is nothing, 64 bytes is nothing. But what if this contains millions of elements? Maybe that's exaggerating, maybe that's not, but what if it does? And in those cases, it's usually a bad idea to get all of the elements back at once. Converting it to a list can literally take minutes depending on your computer. A better solution would be to use an iterator. And I just want to mention one more thing and that is that these iterators are exhaustive. And to demonstrate that, I'm just going to remove all of this and all of this so we only have the reverse text and the reverse coordinates. So with these two, we're going to print the next element in the reversed coordinates. And we're going to do this two times or three times. 
And when we run that, you'll see that we will get one element back at a time, each time we call next. And now let's print the list of the reversed coordinates. And you'll see that at the end, we're going to get the remaining three elements because we are slowly exhausting that iterator. So it works exactly like a generator. As soon as you yield a value, it disappears from that generator. So to sum this up, reversed returns an object while the slice notation immediately returns the reversed string or list or whatever iterable you're trying to reverse. But I'm very curious to hear what you think about the reversed method in the comment section down below, whether you use it for anything or whether you think it's a complete waste of time. But with all that being said, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.